Good morning everyone. The topic for today's UG clinics is vitreous hemorrhage. First about the vitreous humor. So as we know the eye is divided into the anterior segment and the posterior segment. The anterior segment in front of the lens and the posterior segment behind the lens. So the anterior segment is filled with the aqueous humor whereas the posterior segment is filled with the vit vitreous humor. So volume of this vitreous humor is 4 ml and consistency is gel like. It is so, it is a transparent gel and makes up to 80% of the volume of the eye because the posterior chamber is larger than the anterior chamber. Vitreous humor provides support to the delicate inner structures of the eye and provides clear optical media for the rays of light to pass through it and fall on the retina. Then it provides the pathway for the nutrients utilized by the lens, ciliary body and the retina. Vitreous attachments are very important. So it is attached to the posterior lens surface to the Weigart ligament in young uh, individuals, then the vitreous base which is known as the ora serrata, then the optic disc, then the paramacular area and the paravascular areas. The eight changes which occur in the vitreous are it undergoes significant physical and biochemical changes with aging. There is something known as synergesis, which is liquefaction of the gel-like vitreous, which is the most striking change and it is a normal senile change. That is, as the age progresses, this gel becomes more liquid-like. Now, synergesis occurs in most individuals between 40 to 70 years of age and synergesis occurs earlier in eyes which are myopic. Now, this is to show you the difference between how the vitreous looks when it is normal and when there is vitreous hemorrhage. So in the first picture we can see that behind the lens in the posterior segment that there is a clear gel like transparent vitreous. Then in the second case vitreous hemorrhage has occurred due to which the vitreous has become red in color. Now etiology or causes of vitreous hemorrhage are proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So when VH is present in PDR it is usually indicating towards high risk PDR or advanced eye disease as I have told in the diabetic retinopathy discussion. Then secondly retinal tears and posterior vitreous detachment. Then central retinal vein occlusion or CRVO, Eels disease and sickle cell retinopathy and also commonly following ocular trauma. Now vitreous hemorrhage can be pre-retinal hemorrhage, intravitreal hemorrhage or a combination of now, vitreous hemorrhage in the subhyloid space is known as the preretinal hemorrhage or the subhyloid hemorrhage. Why it is given a different name is because of its typical presentation that is in the form of a boat shape. So, why this boat shape occurs? Because the blood is trapped in a potential space between the posterior hyloid and the internal limiting membrane and settles down because of the gravity. So, through this hemorrhage, you can see that the, you cannot see any retinal vessels. It is because it is a pre-retinal hemorrhage that is it is present in front of the retina hence it will mask all the structures which comes beneath it. Now in contrast to pre-retinal or subhyloid hemorrhage which are localized dispersed vitreous hemorrhage into the body of vitreous has no defined border and can range from a few small distinct red blood cells to total obscuration of the posterior pole. As you can see in the picture given of the fundus, there is such a massive dispersed vitreous hemorrhage that none of the structures of the retina is visible. So in these cases, you are supposed to do USGB scan and such a huge vitreous hemorrhage will often need pass planar vitrectomy. The diagnosis of vitreous hemorrhage can be made by correlating it with age of the patients. In infancy and childhood, the causes of vitreous hemorrhage are birth trauma, shaken baby syndrome, child abuse, congenital x ling retinoschisis where there is a splitting of the neurosensory retina and retinopathy of prematurity. Then in middle age, there can be Eels disease, ocular trauma or posterior vitreous detachment. And in old age, there can be exudative age-related macular degeneration, diabetics, branch retinal vein occlusion and again PVD. The symptoms of vitreous hemorrhage include painless gradual diminution of vision, then appearance of floaters in front of the eyes. These floaters can appear as cobwebs, shadows or a red hue. Why the floaters occur is because whenever the vitreous hemorrhage comes in the visual field, there will be an obstruction of the light rays falling on the retina. 
then there are visual field defect or scotomas and photopsia. Photopsia are seeing flashes of light and this occurs when the vitreous hemorrhage rubs against the retina and irregularly excites it. Signs are firstly the red reflex may be absent. The red reflex which comes from the fundus is masked by the vitreous hemorrhage if it is large and diffuse and hence the red reflex may be absent. Then red blood cell may be seen in the anterior vitreous and lastly chronic VH has a yellowish appearance due to hemoglobin breakdown. Management is intravitreal injection of anti-VEGF that is anti-vascular endothelial growth factor. Now if the hemorrhage is small then these uh, anti-VEGFs will help in absorption of the hemorrhage. But if the hemorrhage is very diffuse and large as was seen in the picture earlier then we have to go for pass plana vitrectomy where we have to cut through the vitreous and clear it. Usually in practical uh, scenario we use a combination of both. First we do pass plana vitrectomy and then we go for intravitreal injection of anti-VEGF. This is your questionnaire. Thank you.